So I'll be presenting on the results of a working group, or not the results so much, one of the topics, research topics of a working group on monetary and fiscal policy for a steady state economy. And I want to talk about speculation on a full planet and the driving forces behind speculation. So historically, this is financial speculation. Um, so historically, uh, classical and Keynesian economists looked at speculation as a parasitic activity that's extracting unearned income. And it was a destabilizing force in an economy. In more recent years, primarily since the 70s, we now look at a, a speculation as a way of reducing transaction costs, increasing liquidity, and creating wealth. And speculation is now taxed lower than earned income. So this, this philosophy in economics has filtered into our uh, economic policies. So our research is going to show that economic expansion encroaching on planetary boundaries accelerates ex speculation. Speculation in turn exacerbates inequality. It sporadically increases the price of essential resources, causing serious misery for the people who need them. And it turns the price signal from a negative feedback loop, stabilizing, as a, stabilizing our economy, to a positive uh, feedback loop that's highly destabilizing. So speculation, I'm just defining, is purchasing something now to sell later at a higher price without adding any value to it. And it's driven solely by the expectation that prices will increase. So economists are very complacent about this because they see that when a price increases, it stimulates consumers to demand less and producers to produce more. So we have this, the price mechanism, the negative feedback loop that drives markets to equilibrium. And this assumption of equilibrium underlies all conventional economic theory. So the problem is, though, that essential resources, these are the resources we really need to figure out how to allocate. So essential resources like food, energy, and water, we need a certain quantity of those every day. I don't care what the price is. I'm going to eat my food. I'm going to drink my coffee. Um, I'm going to use oil. Um, these are essential things. They're very demand insensitive to price. A corollary of this problem with essential resources is that a small decrease in supply can lead to a huge increase in price, which attracts speculators. So examples of this, energy. Take a look at 1973 and 79, when a small decrease in oil production led to a huge increase in oil prices. Or staple grains, 2007 to 2008, a small decrease in output of staple grains led to doubling and tripling of the price of the staple grains. I said earlier that demand is insensitive to price, but for the poor, that's not true. If I'm spending 50% of my income on raw food, when the price of food doubles, I cannot possibly consume as much as I did before. So what happens with, in, uh, with uh, essential resources is the market allocates resources to those who have a huge amount of income and don't really need the resource, and it's the poor who tend to dramatically decrease their consumption. Um, so we also, on a full planet, we have essential resources that are in very finite supply. So supply is very insensitive to price. Land's the classic example. When the price of land goes up, there's no change in supply. Oil prices more than, are almost doubled from 2005 to 2013, and there was only a 3% increase in supply. There's simply not enough oil out there to increase supply. Food is very difficult to increase supply in the short run, and agriculture is the biggest threat to our planetary boundaries in terms of uh, nitrogen emissions, phosphorus emissions, biodiversity loss, land, lo um, land use change. So for these things where supply can't respond, a small change in demand creates a large change in price. Price fluctuations are very common, and these price fluctuations trigger speculation. So speculation surges its head when supply and demand cannot respond to price increases. Speculation takes over. Speculation, when I purchase a, a commodity because the price is going up, speculative demand increases. This attracts more speculative, this drives up price, attracts more speculative demand, which drives up price and attracts more speculative demand. We now have a positive feedback loop. Price mechanism has changed entirely. And you can't even analyze, when the conventional economic framework based on equilibrium, you can't even analyze this disequilibrium mechanisms. So our, our financial system works. So the solution to this would take another four minutes, but basically we would need to tax speculation in assets.